The Altar Valley Conservation Alliance seeks to restore grasslands in the valley to increase wildlife habitat, stabilize the soil, and provide forage for livestock. With funding from the Freeport McMoran Copper and Gold Foundation and Pima County, the Alliance has launched a multi-agency project to find sustainable ways to encourage rainfall to seep naturally into the ground, thereby stimulating grass growth and reducing soil erosion. This project will build various water management structures to assess best practices that will restore water flow and provide the moisture needed to sustain grasses and ground cover vegetation. The first task of the project has already been completed. Key stakeholders spent about five days together discussing the issues, walking the land, reviewing options, and deciding what will be installed and what outcomes will be monitored and assessed. Once the group agreed on its basic goals, first sites were marked and new structures planned. Who were the project's task one participants? Agreeing upon common goals is a process. As they considered the task at hand, attendees had many questions. If this is the right place, maybe this is something we can get into later. Is this the right place to be doing work? Should we be doing it up there first? Should we be doing it down there first? So, so where will the structures go? In determining locations, the group considered current erosion damage, landowners' concerns about having work done on their land, and practical accessibility of the sites. They also looked at the extent of damage and the likelihood of positive measurable results. What is possible to measure and assess? I, like you, would like to see this, this, uh, this road problem get solved. This whole road is hydraulically connected from the top of the hill down, that, down to that crop. So all the water that comes off of this watershed and this landscape hits the road and comes down the road. Hence why roads are a problem. And you can see the effect as, as you know, the velocity increases both in slope and quantity. It starts to cut this out and right below us here basically we've got a, a stream bed. I would like to see us develop more forage out here, although I don't know how to do that. Uh, but maybe some water harvesting and things like that. Also. The group found some reference sites, places where water flowed relatively naturally and where the grass was growing fairly well. The group walked for miles to see for themselves the roads, the ditches, the erosion cuts, gullies and trails, and the vegetation, or lack of it. The group began to match solutions with the individual problem areas. Fundamentally, it all has to be tied back to what the objectives are. If the objectives are stabilize the channel grades, that's different than the objective is to get more forage on the uplands. Not to say that you can't accomplish both with one technique, it's just that without clarity on those objectives, anything structural is not going to be able to be um, measured quantitatively and tied back to what you were trying to accomplish. As the work session progressed, the plans began to take shape. It was agreed that the watershed consultants would map locations for the first sites where structures will be built. Then, the list of materials and the labor force needed will be developed. Pre-installation activities such as site surveys for endangered species or cultural resources will be part of the next task of the project. 
A checklist of necessary steps will be shared with Valley landowners so that anyone wishing to make similar improvements on their lands will know what they must do. The Alliance knits people together much like these restoration projects knit together the essential parts of the watershed. You need an organization like the Alliance to make some sense out of the cacophony of organizations and people that have a stake in a particular land area. And that's what collaborative conservation is really all about.